Modern radio towers are an engineering marvel. Pumping out controlled radio signals hundreds of miles away, they can transmit a lot of power. And just how much power are we talking? Well, this is a 7 kilowatt tower, part of a 12 kilowatt system. And the strongest in the world can exceed 2 megawatts. That's 2 million watts of power to be used for not just telecommunications, but also wireless power. However, not all radio towers are created equal. FM radio towers tend to be taller and have their antennas at the actual top, seen here in the Schokel transmitter, because FM works by line of sight. These towers will also be grounded for lightning protection. AM radio, on the other hand, uses the actual tower as the antenna, and as such, their height corresponds to the transmitting frequency. Since the antenna is charged to several thousand volts, this means touching the tower can be seriously dangerous, something Jeff from Gearling Engineering knows a thing or two about. After they invited me to visit the same 12 kilowatt transmitter site, I got my ass on a plane and brought a little surprise because I had a date with wireless power. Okay, the vaporized hot dog video amazed me, hands down, but it also reminded me of the basics, that radio isn't just some mystical invisible communication form, it is radiated electrical power in a form that travels incredibly far. Being born into the digital era, cell phones are a permanent fixture of our daily lives. Despite completely changing the future of humanity, we are numb to the miracle of radio transmission. Most of us simply know it for the music in our cars or for long distance communication. That's the small scale stuff, but what radio actually is on the producing end, it's a scientific miracle on its own. Imagine, if you will, there exists an alien planet, and on that planet is a power intensive species, using electrical power for their entire civilization. But upon closer inspection, there aren't any power lines. No wires, just these mysterious white beacons which radiate power invisibly out into the air. And hundreds of miles from a tower, an individual of their species can draw energy out of the air for their daily needs. One single tower covering tens of thousands of square miles. That, that would be amazing. Oh wait, that's us! Radio towers are beacons which radiate gargantuan amounts of high voltage power in the form of radio waves. Though energy delivery drops off at an exponential rate with distance, at their very essence, they're a method of wireless power transmission. But how does that power act differently from what's flowing through power lines? And how would you extract electrical energy out of the emitted radio field at a distance? Enter Gearling Engineering. After a quick chat with Jeff, he invited me out to a tour site in Missouri to answer these questions. Keep in mind, this power is designed to be radiated wirelessly through the air. So, next, I want to see just how far from the tower we can be and still extract energy out of the thin air. And I've built a special circuit which helps me do just that. It was a pretty simple build which I did back at the shop. Busting out the RF receiver, I was anxious to see it extract power, but quickly realized we had a problem. It was impossible to see the LED in sunlight, so we walked closer and even closer. But the LED never lit, which was a complete mystery to me, because surely within 30 meters of a 12,000 watt transmitting station, you could light up an LED, right? So we brought it inside to do a few measurements. We inspected the antenna for brakes, which was intact at 32 ohms, and the capacitors worked, yet the system was only outputting one millivolt. Damn. This told us the radio frequency diodes had blown. But why blown diodes indicates too much power? The plot thickens. Taking the receiver back to Jeff's shop, we replaced the diodes. Doing a quick transmission test with a five watt radio, the system worked perfectly. There we go. Sending a sustained transmission with the circuit permanently turned on and the LED gets brighter with proximity. Absolutely amazing. And working as intended. This got us thinking, what if that LED wasn't in place? What voltages would build up? Uh, we're just going to test the voltage output of this receiving circuit. So here we go. Starting at a couple millivolts and then you ready? five second transmission. 
And now I push the power button, and it says 14.3 volts charged. <laughs> it works! Considering we transmitted at 144 megahertz and my antenna resonates at 1.68, they were far off from tuned. Okay, so the receiving circuit produced 14 volts while being completely out of tune with the transmitting signal, a signal that only lasted a couple of seconds at a power level of 5 watts. Imagine if this circuit was in permanent proximity to, oh, gee, I don't know, like a 12 kilowatt system that nearly perfectly matched the receiving frequency? Uh, yeah, we'd be seeing way more voltage than that. Oh, I don't know, maybe enough to blow a diode? After chatting with Joe, we concluded the receiver likely blew itself when I was still kilometers from the tower. So by the time I drove to the site and pulled it out of my car, only 30 meters from the tower, it was dead. Armed with this knowledge, we visited the tower one last time. We wanted real readings, and this time, I didn't attach the antenna until the camera was rolling. Four, five... No, we're going up. Six. Okay, so okay, we're gonna we're gonna pop it soon. Removing the antenna stopped all charging and potentially saved the circuit. Watching the voltage drop this quickly indicates it could benefit from larger caps. Reattaching the antenna. Yeah, charging faster this time, a lot faster. Yep. Fast enough that after a few seconds of charging, it built up enough power to flash the LED. Yep. Little pulse rooney. Yep. It broke shortly afterwards, but honestly, I've never been happier for a project to break because it indicates that it was doing its job. It was actually pulling too much power out of the air and blowing itself up. So I really want to build a more powerful, more robust version of this generator. Let me know. The self-powered electric vehicle is a marvel of engineering. It defies conventional wisdom. It operates without traditional batteries or charging stations. The secret lies in harnessing the invisible energy that surrounds us, radio frequencies. This technology sounds like science fiction. But it is real, it is a game changer. Imagine a world free from the constraints of charging stations and limited range. This is the promise of Chikumbuzo's invention. Radio frequencies are everywhere. They are invisible waves of energy. We use them for communication, entertainment, and now transportation. Chikumbuzo's invention captures these waves. It converts them into electrical energy. This is not magic, it is science. The car's antenna system acts like a net, it captures radio waves from the environment. These waves are then amplified and converted into usable electricity. This powers the vehicle's motor. The future is wireless. We are using radio frequencies. So the electric vehicle and the greener power of grid machine, they share the same, the, the same common invention, which is called microsonic energy device, a device that harnesses radio frequencies and change it direct, into direct energy. But that is useful. So basically, what happens is that Maxwell and his team have been able to come up with a way to convert radio frequencies into direct energy on a large scale. But now the question might be, what are radio frequencies? Let me explain. Radio frequencies are a type of invisible energy waves that travel through the air and are used to send and receive signals. They help us listen to music on the radio, make phone calls, watch TV, and use wireless internet. These waves can travel long distances, pass through walls, and carry signals without needing wires. According to scientific findings, radio frequencies can be captured and transformed into usable energy through a process known as radio frequency energy harvesting. However, the amount of energy that can be harvested this way is extremely small. That is where Maxwell made a breakthrough. He discovered a method to harness this energy and also amplify it making it a practical and useful resource.